I'm a passionate defender of free speech. There's a massive clue in the name of this show, uncensored. But there are limits on free speech. I've always said that Alex Jones is a perfect example of where that line got crossed. Well, at least we're not getting slaughtered in mathematics class. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Okay. Fidel Castro took the guns. Many... Hugo Chavez took the guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Doesn't matter how many lemmings you get out there on the street begging for them to have their guns taken. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? Folks, as you may be familiar with, there's a pretty popular American conservative subculture of making fun of the Brits. Haha, 1776, you lost the war. We overthrew your king. Shut up, you stupid Brit. Your opinion doesn't matter. I'm sure you see American conservatives speak like this. And to tell you the honest truth, I do not usually engage in that type of behavior. Why? Because while I do support our revolution, I also still have a great deal of mutual respect and admiration for the British monarchy and the British Empire, right? I see America as having descended from their country. That's sort of our mother civilization in many ways. We speak English. The values upon which our country were founded are obviously English values in nature. And so I am not here to really start brother wars between what I consider to be mutual friends in many ways. However, with that said, in the case of Pierce Morgan, who seemingly on a very regular basis feels the need to go and lecture Americans on our constitution and our values and the things we do in our country, such as, I don't know, our free speech. In this case, it is absolutely true that Pierce, you are not even an American. You are a dumb red coat and you can seriously shut up. OK, and of course, folks, what am I talking about? Well, this week, as I'm sure everyone has heard by now, Alex Jones was reinstated on Twitter slash X. That is obviously a huge win for free speech. And to tell you the truth, I mean, I do think Alex Jones has been right about a lot of important things. But even if you totally despise the guy. I think it's pretty easy to say, well, he should still have the right to speak. Social media platforms should support free speech. So even if he's controversial, that's obviously a good thing that, hey, at least his voice is allowed. But that is uh, not the view of Pierce Morgan, who went on a complete tirade this week that started with Alex Jones and ended with him just saying a multitude of completely dumb things. And we're going to react to and talk about that here today. Just to preface this, though, I do want to remind people, and the reason why I'm making such a big deal out of Pierce Morgan saying and doing this is because while he is often associated in America with being kind of a liberal figure, he's not a generic NPC liberal. He claims to be anti-woke. In fact, to his credit, he was canceled from Good Morning Britain for exercising his free speech in regards to Meghan Markle, and that got him in a bunch of trouble. So you would think Pierce Morgan, of all people, because he himself has been canceled and deplatformed for saying what he believes would be an adamant defender of a guy like Alex Jones not being deplatformed for what he believes, but instead it is the opposite. And uh, let's take a look. We'll listen to a little bit here of Pierce Morgan's monologue in response to the unbanning of Alex Jones. Take a listen, folks, and, and, and notice here very carefully how he says, I support free speech and then just says he doesn't support free speech. All right. And it's in, it's in the span of about 30 seconds. So take a listen here. Well, I'm a passionate defender of free speech. There's a massive clue in the name of this show, uncensored, and I believe in it. I believe that all honestly held opinions, however offensive they are, belong in the open, where they can be challenged, debated, and exposed, but there are- Okay, pause right there. Just to review what he said, he says, I'm a passionate defender of free speech. I believe all honestly held opinions should be challenged and out in the open. Okay, now I'm gonna play from there. Listen to literally the very next thing he says. And exposed, but there are limits on free speech. There are laws oh. and there is a line. I've always said that Alex Jones is a perfect example of where that line got crossed. He's a conspiracy theorist and shock jock in America. Okay, so I played for you, ladies and gentlemen, only the first 28 seconds of Pierce Morgan's monologue, and he already contradicted himself. OK, 
<laughs> he said, I'm a big supporter of free speech, but there are limits on free speech. And Alex Jones crosses that line. Why? Why? So then what you're saying is you don't believe in free speech like that. That's literally the opening to this monologue. I'm actually a supporter of free speech, but actually I'm not a supporter of free speech. So with that said, let's try to figure out why Pierce Morgan uh, does not support. He, he, he claims he supports free speech, but in the case of Alex Jones, he apparently does not support free speech. OK, so I think the generic argument he and most anti Alex Jones people have been using, and I'm sure he said it at many different points, we could pull it up, but it basically goes something like this. Yeah, it's one thing to have right wing opinions, but Alex Jones is a dangerous figure who should not be given a platform, right? Because he's too dangerous. He's too crazy. And if you give this guy a platform, he's going to do dangerous stuff with that platform. And so I, I would assume the argument as to why he shouldn't have a Twitter account, you know, because he, he's never Pierce Morgan has never argued that only people he agrees with should have a Twitter account. So I suppose it's like, OK, this guy is too much giving him a Twitter account, giving him a platform because that's all it is. Right. Elon Musk, Twitter, LLC, they've not endorsed in any way Alex Jones. They're just saying, hey, it's an open platform. He's allowed to be on that platform. Uh, apparently, again, according to Pierce Morgan, he's too dangerous and his free speech is too dangerous to be given that platform. But there's just one argument, there's just one problem, I should say, with Pierce Morgan making that argument. And hey, Alex Jones is too dangerous to have a platform. And the problem with that is that Pierce Morgan has given Alex Jones himself a platform repeatedly. OK, and I'm sure many of you guys have seen it, but I'll just pull up the proof right now just so you can know that I'm, you know, not making stuff up here. OK, just 11 months ago. And keep in mind, this is already Hook. after the Sandy Hook lawsuit. In fact, that's what he came on the show to discuss with Pierce Morgan. OK, so he can't say it's because it's not because of that. He Pierce Morgan brings Alex Jones on the show and they have an interview slash debate. I mean, Pierce Morgan was cutting him off most of the time. But long story short, the point here is that if you want to make the case that Alex Jones is too dangerous to have a platform, Pierce Morgan, then why did you yourself give Pierce Morgan, a, I mean, give Alex Jones a platform by having him on your show? And I'm sure Pierce Morgan re would respond to that by saying, well, not everyone that I bring on my show, I necessarily agree with. You know, I'm I was there to debate and push back. Well, I get that. That's fair enough. But how is you doing that any different than X and Elon Musk, who never said they endorse Alex Jones, never said they agree with Alex Jones on certain issues, but literally just said, OK, you're allowed a platform to voice to voice your ideas on Twitter slash X, the platform. How is that literally any different than Pierce Morgan bringing Alex Jones on his show? Because, again, if the argument from Pierce Morgan is that Alex Jones is way too dangerous to be given a platform to be heard, to have free speech at all, then, Al then if Pierce really believed that, he would not have Alex Jones on his show. But I suppose the difference between Alex Jones being able to voice his opinions publicly on X versus being able to voice his opinions on Pierce Morgan's show is that on Pierce Morgan's show, Pierce is able to get ratings off of it. He's able to monetize it and profit off of it. OK, so apparently, according to Pierce Morgan, generally speaking, it is unacceptable to give Alex Jones a platform because he's so dangerous and he's a conspiracy theorist and we can't do that. And that's true of Twitter. But when Pierce has Alex on his own show and is giving him a platform and doing the same exact thing, basically, as Twitter. Oh, no, that's different because I can make money off of that. Do you see the just shame? I, I don't even know if I want to call it hypocrisy. I'm just going to call it shamelessness that's going on there again to Pierce Morgan. Alex Jones shouldn't have a platform unless Pierce Morgan is monetizing it and also being allowed to cut him off and interrupt him the entire time. So 
That's first and foremost. The argument that Alex Jones is too dangerous to be given a platform should not even be taken seriously because Pierce Morgan himself gave Alex Jones a platform several times throughout the years. So that, that doesn't even make sense. I'm not even here to entertain that or take that seriously. That's Pierce Morgan argument number one as to why the guy should not be allowed back on Twitter. The second thing, and he was replying to some people who were responding to him, you know, talking about the Alex Jones stuff, uh, replies here and says, hate speech isn't a thing. OK, so this is what this Twitter user here says. And Pierce Morgan replies to that, saying there is such a thing as hate speech when it involves spewing defamatory lies, which Alex Jones discovered to his one point two billion dollar cost. OK, and so to summarize what he's basically trying to say here, and he says it here in this tweet, too, he basically argues that because Alex Jones lost the defamation lawsuit to the you know Sandy Hook people, that because of that, he should not have the right to be back on Twitter and he should not have the right to free speech. OK, so, you know, I have my thoughts on that, on the lawsuit itself. Like, I think there are some should he have said what he said? No. Do I also think it was kind of an abuse of lawfare in many ways and the damages that were caused were not worth billions of dollars? Sure. But that's just my disagreeing with the legal system. Let's even take it all at face value. OK, so he says, oh, because he defamed the Sandy Hook parents, he shouldn't be allowed to be on Twitter. Couple things wrong with that argument, Pierce Morgan. First and foremost is that if you actually go back and look, the reason Alex Jones was banned on Twitter in the first place had absolutely nothing to do with the Sandy Hook situation at all whatsoever. Mark Dice has covered this. You can go back from 2017 and actually read the news articles about this. The reason Alex Jones was deplatformed on Twitter is because he did a video in public insulting a CNN journalist. And I think, you know, Twitter said that it was her harassment or incitement or whatever it was. And the pretext of that was kind of ridiculous, right? Because journalists berate and question other journalists in public all the time. It, you know, you're going to deplatform any reporter who, you know, confronts a politician. It's a pretty normal thing in journalism, but still, regardless, doesn't matter, whatever. That's issue number one is the reason Alex Jones was deplatformed has nothing to do with Sandy Hook. OK, it, it, it was used actually later on as a justification to keep him being deplatformed. But if the issue is he shouldn't have an account because he violated the terms of service, then I think we should actually talk about what he did on Twitter, not what he did outside of Twitter on his show or whatever. OK, that's number one. But number two, and I think what's more important here is if Pierce Morgan's argument is that, hey, if you lost a defamation case if you lost a civil lawsuit in court by the way just to be clear it's a civil case not a criminal case if you get sued for defamation you should not be allowed to have a platform you should be banned on social media you shouldn't be allowed free speech this is what i said in reply which is first and foremost you do not lose the rest of your first amendment just because you defame or slander someone. That's not how the First Amendment or free speech works, right? You may have to pay damages for the particular statements you, sh you said that were defaming. That is true. You may have to retract those. But after that is all settled, you can still say whatever you want that does not constitute defamation, slander, or libel, or whatever else, okay? So that doesn't actually make sense. Pierce Morgan saying, well, he should not have the right to any free speech because he lost one defamation lawsuit. And on top of that. Think about what that standard means if it were applied equally. OK, so if you lose any defamation case, you have to be deplatformed and your First Amendment as a whole is taken away. Think about what that would mean and apply to every major media news outlet out there. Because let's be real, I think basically every piece of mainstream media, for the most part, if you look at some point in their history, they have either gone to court or settled out of court, one or the other, a defamation or slander case. It happens all the time, okay? So does that mean they should all, because again, they lost a defamation case, they should all lose their platform as well? They should be taken off the internet? Because I don't think that spells good news for 
again, literally any mainstream media news outlet out there. So that's another point here that, like I said, just does not make any sense. Pierce Morgan thinks what he's saying here is so intelligent and he, he's making really good points. No, he's not. No, he's not. None of what he's saying makes any sense or is consistent with even like his own moral standards. It's all a big joke. And to tell you the truth, I think what this all stems back from is that, you know, 10, 11 years ago, Pierce Morgan brought Alex Jones on his show to discuss mass shootings and Alex made him look really stupid. And many have argued throughout the years that that interview is what ended up getting Pierce Morgan's show canceled. So, you know, maybe he still holds a grudge there. But if I'm going to just react to what he's seriously trying to argue here again, none of what Pierce Morgan is saying actually makes any sense. It's not intelligent. It shouldn't even be taken seriously. OK, whether that's on the too dangerous for the platform point, which, again, doesn't make sense, or the whole defamation point, which, again, doesn't make sense. OK, and that actually is just the beginning here. I know it was a long video, but that was actually just the beginning here of the Pierce Morgan meltdown this week. OK, because for some reason, I don't know. You know, a guy who I, I will admit I had some ounces of respect for, not a, not a ton, Right. I, I never idolized the guy as some type of political role model, but who I did sometimes respect for saying true things and calling out the BS just totally went off the rails this week because after getting roasted for his ridiculous opinions on Alex Jones, he expanded to just spout a lot of other ridiculous opinions about a lot of other ridiculous things. People were tweeting about him regarding school shootings, and he goes on here to say this. He says, I'm certain the founding fathers would have done something about the gun violence epidemic if they were still around a million new guns are sold in the u.s every month does that make you more or less confident of further mass shootings okay this is of course the same pierce morgan who says in every monologue about gun control uh that i'm not here to tell americans how to run their gun culture and then they proceed to just he proceeds to just tell americans how to run their gun culture uh so he said that he also said he also said this, OK, because I, I guess some Muslims like, like I kid you not. Everyone is mad at Pierce Morgan this week. OK, the conservatives in America are mad at him. <laughs> the Muslims are mad at him. <laughs> like everyone just doesn't like this guy. And it's hilarious. Uh, but, you know, someone was tweeting at him because I guess he brought this Muslim guy on his show and called him homophobic or something like that. I didn't even see it. But this guy tweets at him saying, as a Catholic, do you believe homosexual? You believe homosexuality is a sin, too? No. And Pierce Morgan says, I don't know. So Pierce Morgan says he's a Catholic, but he doesn't believe homosexuality is a sin, which, of course, goes against both directly the word of the Bible and official Catholic Church doctrine. So, you know, I, I, I truly I don't know how many more wrong things this guy has managed to say in the span of 48 hours. It, it is just absolutely uh, ridiculous. But anyways, to close out the video here, I want to play this right here for any for anyone who kind of missed the opening monologue that I played. You couldn't understand him over his accent. Uh, we we did have the research and development team at Vince Town Media creates a translation. OK, this is a this is a translation of Pierce Morgan trying to lecture American conservatives and the American people on a whole as to what our own First Amendment means and what our own Second Amendment means. And also uh, lecture official Catholic teaching on what Catholic teaching teaches. OK, here's Pierce Morgan, folks. Well, at least we're not getting slaughtered in mathematics class. Again, uh, that that is it's slightly translated. OK, that, but that's all it is. Otherwise, it's a real uh, video of Pierce Morgan saying what he said. And this is all true. OK. To wrap up here, because we've beaten this to death. I think you get the point by now. The guy's a clown. But here's one point I want to make. I don't think a lot of other conservatives this week who have dunked on Pierce Morgan have made, which is this. It's especially ironic that Pierce Morgan got canceled from Good Morning Britain because of his feud with Meghan Markle. Because I know they don't like each other. And by the way, Pierce Morgan is right to have said the things he said about Pierce, about Meghan Markle, I should say. But when you really break it down, 
Pierce Morgan and Meghan Markle actually have a lot in common. In fact, I speculate now that they may become some of the best of friends. Why is that? Because when you really think about it, they're the same exact person. Who was Meghan Markle? Who is Meghan Markle? An annoying foreigner who went to the UK and decided to lecture the British people on everything that they, you know, revere and hold dear to heart. Okay. To attack the monarchy, to call the royal family racist, to destroy the royal family, to call to lecture Britain on wokeism or something like that, and just be a completely annoying, unlikable figure that everyone kind of wishes would just get out of their face and get out of like the British spotlight as a whole. In Britain, at least. Well, who is Pierce Morgan? Who is Pierce Morgan? Pierce Morgan is our form of Meghan Markle. Because Pierce Morgan comes the other direction across the pond, okay, and decides to lecture all of us with literally no knowledge on it at all. Here's what your First Amendment really means. Here's what free speech really means. Here's what the Second Amendment means. It's like, no, shut up, you stupid Brit, okay? In the same way British people are right to feel about Meghan Markle, who is this stupid American coming to our country trying to tell us like what, how to run our monarchy and what to do with our country? That's the same way we Americans feel about Piers Morgan. Okay, who is this stupid British, this foreigner, this person who's not even American, does not have a vested interest in what goes on in our country, to come over here and tell us what our free speech means, what our Second Amendment means? Get out of this country, okay? Like, we, no one asked you, truly. And that's how I feel about Piers Morgan uh, throughout this whole debacle, okay? And for the sake of everyone... I hope he gets back on track or at least just kind of shuts up about all of this because I think some of the anti-woke stuff and all that he was doing before, it's important for the conversation. That's why I had some respect for him before. But if this is the path he's going to go down of just turning into the Megan, Mer the Omega, the American Meghan Markle, then I'm not here for it. And he really needs to shut up and go back to Britain. Seriously. That said, folks, let me know your thoughts on the entire situation down in the comment section down below. Again, I think this is especially more ironic when you consider Pierce Morgan has been repeatedly canceled for his own free speech, but he's still. Whatever, whatever. Screw Pierce Morgan. See you guys later. Alpha moves only. God bless and peace.